this is David for Big Bits, and in this video we are in our eighth video now of the TradingView PineScript development tutorials where we have created a triple mini moving average indicator and we've added all sorts of features. In this video we're going to add in ribbons. You can see this on the screen here pretty clearly. Uh, there are other lines between the ones we have done in the past. So these kind of give you an idea of when moving averages are kind of converging and uh, basically help you find a knot in the price and usually well in some cases price action can follow when the uh, ribbons can get tight. It's just another way to uh, show you some of the features here and uh, a little bit of the math. You know, originally when I was, wanted to do this video I wanted to go over loops but uh, I found the best way to do this was just to go without it and use a little bit of math instead of looping through and uh, just calculating the difference between these. Now, what I was thinking of doing was just creating a ribbon based on the, uh, the difference of the price from here and here, but instead what I did was I calculated a uh, relevant period. So I had five lines between MA1 and MA2, and what I did was I calculated how many periods uh, would fit evenly in here if I wanted to show five lines and uh, use the periods to run the same MA calculation. Now there's a little bit of a downside to that uh, but the ribbons aren't a super flexible thing like the other things we've been doing. There are some settings that we have for it. Let me go in here and show you. Uh, this is the styling settings. Just a moment. There's really only one setting for the ribbons and that's just to show or to hide the ribbons. So if you have the indicator added and you don't want to see that, just turn it off. Now one of the other limitations, and I'll go over why this is a limitation later, is that if you change uh, either the type, the source, or the resolution for any of the moving averages, it'll get rid of the ribbons between it and its uh, next associated moving averages. So if uh, we change the MA1 to an RMA, you'll notice that there is no ribbons now between the green and the yellow line like there were before. That's because it's it's just calculating the midpoint. Now if I had chosen to find the difference between those and just average out the price, then it probably could have done it, but it wouldn't have made a lot of sense in my opinion. I like the fact that it's different periods and that the ribbons can actually go out of bounds of the... Uh, of the other moving averages that are in here and uh, that might not make a lot of sense if you're not too familiar with it but it is the truth here so change that it'll get rid of it also with the close because if you're calculating a uh, moving average for all of these different lines if you change the the uh, source for the data then if this one doesn't match this one how's it going to know what source to pull for the data here and I didn't want to just assume and the same thing goes for the resolution. All right, so now you've seen kind of how this works. You can see uh, we've color coded it. It looks pretty nice in my opinion. So let's actually take a look at the code. Uh, if you're following the tutorial series, that's probably why you're here. So uh, let's scroll back up to the top of the code. The first thing we added was another input for showing the ribbons. This is gonna default to on on this particular one. This is scripting tutorial eight. So you won't find this on the scripting tutorials before that. So you'll find that new here. And then let's also go down. I did want to mention there was a tiny uh, error. Not really an error, but uh, more of a typo. Uh, on the plot titles for the forecasting, they were just labeled incorrectly. I fixed that in scripting tutorial 8. So if you're following along and you noticed that earlier, good catch. All right. So now we are on to doing our ribbons. Now, I like to make my code very flexible and ideally, like I said, I would like to use loops to calculate these values um, because as you can see, there's a little pattern right here and I increment up one every line here for each ribbon. And that's pretty ideal for a uh, loop because I only have the one number that changes. The problem is that the uh, oh the uh, the plots don't like to operate within the loop, and it really doesn't really save me much uh, coding resources to convert these five into a loop. 
whereas since these can't do it, it doesn't make much of a difference in my opinion. So I just left these out of a loop. I think eventually we'll get into a loop video if you're curious about those. It is in the PineScript uh, reference manual, uh, the for loops are, so you can go out and find that there. But you'll notice we calculate these values. Okay, we're doing the same thing we did before. We have to tell it the security so that we can give it the correct resolution. And we're going to use the type source and a new function that's called the ribbon period or it's kind of abbreviated for it. it's our period and this is how we're going to calculate what period we're going to use for these different ribbons and this is what does all the magic of deciding uh, how it's going to calculate the specific period and we pass in the MA1 and the MA2 so we're doing ribbons between MA1 and MA2 first and then this okay so these are the variables the inputs into the function here. The next one is the step. So this is just the rivet count essentially. This is ribbon one, two, three, four, five. That's really all that's for, but you'll see why it's useful in a minute. And then we also have uh, the input for ribbons, which is how many ribbons there are total. And that's also going to be pretty apparent why we need that in just a moment. Now, that takes care of calculating the MAs, but how do we calculate the ribbon periods? It's really quite simple. Uh, it looks pretty complicated, but it is not. The first thing we want to do is we want to find the difference between period one and period two. Okay, I'm actually going to break out my whiteboard here because it'll make a little bit more sense when you see the math. Uh, step by step. It's kind of hard to see it when you're looking at a bunch of parentheses uh, and you're trying to remember PEMDAS from high school, if, uh, if you're out of high school that is. If you haven't had a, an algebra class then you might not even know what I'm talking about. So we're going to find the difference between period 1 and 2. So when we're looking at MA1 and MA2 that is actually 50 and 100 in the default values. So it would be 50 minus 100 and I hope you can read this Okay, yeah, I think that looks right. Maybe. I'm not sure. But uh, 50 minus 100. I'm just going to step through it if it doesn't turn out right, if the text is backwards in the video. Oh, well. Uh, we're just kind of going through this out loud here. So we have 50 minus 100. That's actually a negative 50, okay? So the reason it's negative 50 is we're finding the difference from a smaller number to a larger number. That's why we use the absolute value. This way the difference is measured as a length and it's always a positive value. So it's actually a positive 50 here. Now we take that number 50 and we divide it by the number of ribbons that we have. And if you'll remember the ribbons were the last input here and that's five. We wanted five ribbons between here. But the thing is if we just used uh, and divided by five here we would actually have our fifth line end up being on the other moving average. So we have to add one to it so that uh, we have six groups and it's gonna be hard to see but you'll have one area to three, four, five, six. And I know it's really hard to see. I'm not zoomed in enough, but uh, trust me, that's how it works. That's how the math goes here. All right, so now we divide that 50 by, in this case, six, okay? So let me pull that up and do that really quick because that might have a rounding in there. Yeah, eight and a third. Uh, it's probably going to round down because I don't think you can do uh, fractional periods on here. So we have 8 now. All right. But if the period was just 8, then it wouldn't be here. You know, we would have it much closer to the actual price if we were looking here if it was just 8. So we actually have to add the ribbon in for this. Now, to get them to show up between each other, to get them to be the appropriate value between them, we have to add the minimum value between period one and period two. So in this case, it is 50. The minimum is 50. So we have 58 period moving average, which is this line just under the thick green line. 
that is the 58 period moving average. And it might not make perfect sense uh, if you're just thinking of the math for the first time, but it worked out. And let's actually try this the other way around. Now, I don't recommend doing this, but uh, if we were to set our MA1 much larger than MA2, it still does the ribbon. But keep in mind, the ribbon for those lines are always between MA1 and MA2. So I recommend, uh, and based on the coloring, is that when you're using this indicator, you always keep MA1 period shorter than the MA2 period and the MA2 shorter than the MA3. Ideally, they'd be all on the same resolution, but if you're using different resolutions, you would want the quickest moving average first. <sighs> That might be hard to understand, but uh, if you're using like a, a 50 week here, or, yeah, a 50 week moving average, you would actually want that to be, uh, that's actually the same thing as the 200 period, uh, or close to it. That's, well, not even close to it, it would be what, 357 times. Yeah. All right, my brain's getting a little fried right here, but uh, I'm not going to go into the math anymore because I think I'm starting to lose my focus here. Anyway, we know how the ribbons work now, and as I've mentioned, let me change that back to 50. It works the exact same way from 2 to 3. Okay, now one of the things I did was I set the transparency on the lines really low or really high, depending on how you look at it here. The numbers kind of faded in the closer they got to the yellow and faded out the closer they got to the outside, um, closer to the outer moving average. Now, it, well, it's outer in this case. It doesn't always have to be this situation. Um, let's see, was there anything else here that really stuck out? Stood out, no. Um, the only other thing we did that I really need to point out, uh, other than the, well, I don't think you even were able to see the colors. I apologize about that. Let me change that okay so now you can actually see the transparency values uh, I really do apologize about that uh, but you can see they kind of faded in scroll down a little bit one line at a time here or try to okay that's as far as it's got it but you can kind of see what I mean we, we set the transparency less and less they're fading out as they go on uh, but that's what I mean by alpha color coded <laughs> Alpha a lot of times refers to the transparency. Okay, the last thing, and I keep getting sidetracked. I really apologize about that. But uh, we also wanted to make sure we only show these when these conditions are true. So we need our input, that checkbox for show ribbons to be checked. We need the MA1 type to match MA2, the MA1 resolution to match the MA2 resolution, and the MA1 source to match the MA2 source. We do the same thing for two and three, and now we've got five ribbons. So now you might be thinking, uh, that's great, but I want more. Okay, well, that's easy enough. Uh, you're watching the video, so I'm going to tell you how you can do more. It's pretty simple. Make a new line here uh, under ribbon five, name it ribbon six. Just increase your step size here. Uh, that's all you do to calculate the value. Then do the same thing for the plot and just change your transparency and the plot value here on the next line to ribbon six and you would just continue to do that on and on now like i said ideally this would be done in a for loop but the plots don't seem to work very well with the for loops so i'll just leave it at that for now and honestly i don't think you need any more than this this is on a daily chart and they're already fairly close together i don't personally i don't think there's any more that you would need but it's always an option there for you Okay, so if, if you like this video, please leave a like. Uh, if you like this series so far, please subscribe. We're going to continue it on. I've already had requests for people to do uh, convert this into some sort of strategy or also to uh, do back testing and other features on TradingView, and we'll get to that. It's just going to take a little bit of time. Uh, I have to develop all this stuff. Every feature we add to it takes a little bit more time. And then, of course, I have to record the videos. So uh, we'll, we'll get there. It just might not be tomorrow or the day after. But uh, we'll continue to put out videos and we'll get caught up. And uh, thank you. I really appreciate you watching the videos and have a great one.